Hi, my name's David McEwen. I'm Eric Apapule. Yeah, we met on a tour bus, I think, didn't we? Mm -hmm. Our but, first tour bus tour, yeah. Yeah, back in 2000 or something like that. Yeah. With a, with a guy called Nitin Sawney. Um, Eric was playing bass. I was looking after front of house sound. And, uh, yeah, we just sort of hooked up, became friends, and and a few years later we decided to merge our worlds. Eric's mm -hmm. sort of instruments, guitars, basses, mm -hmm. drums, everything basically. Yeah, and, short wise, yeah. and my studio kind of uh, kit. And uh, so we came up with the, this place, the Sanctuary. I think, I think the emphasis is on live in here. I think we really like the live thing, although we can program, but we like to play everything mm. pretty much. That's our strong point. Um, mm. And then mess with it later. But it's all about performance. Uh, yeah, well, we had Plan B. Plan B uh, oh, that guy. Hey. Yeah. He, uh, he came and spent three years here. Mm -hmm. And we, uh, we did a, a, num a, num a number one album called The Defamation of Strickland Banks. Mm -hmm. Which is, uh, yeah, it's a big success and we were really uh, proud to have been involved with it. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, we started out with a hip hop album which we are actually working on now. So um, that was about four years ago. And then he got linked up with um, Atlantic, and so they were trying to find an angle for for him to release and release his next album, which his first album was a pure hip hop album. And then he um, fell in love with Motown after listening to. It. He's always been in, in love with songs, and he's, he was trying to get his songs into into the next album and he couldn't find a way so they were, so between Atlantic and Ben Drew um, they decided to to, to to go for the Motown angle so we kind of developed that angle so sort of, sort of slide away from the hip hop oh, It's been a very exciting few years for us with the success of that Atlantic were really excited about it because they said he's the male Amy Winehouse so there was all this excitement going on yeah, at the time so he was like okay let's, let's, uh, let's roll with it and try and you know zone in on that angle and so yeah there was a lot of excitement mm -hmm. I was playing bass and piano and backing vocals and so we were kind of working the tracks through as a band and then so we would kind of write musical parts to the songs in the process as at the same time as producing yeah sound yeah. I, I just love playing I play instruments all day long and Dave loves tinkering with uh, this stuff so I mean, I'm a guitarist, but he's a proper guitarist, so it's, uh, you know. But he's a proper engineer, so between the two of us, we kind of balance each other out, you know, so. Uh, Nitin, um, I've been working with Nitin for, yeah, near on 12 years now, and um, both live and in the studio. Um, he was commissioned to do the music for the Human Planet Project, and he said, David, would you mix it? Uh, so, yeah, um, it was basically my relationship with Nitin that, that led to that. Uh, so I recorded the orchestra, um, and then I merged all of the programming that Nitin had done with the orchestral sessions here, and we mixed it in 5.1 in this room. So, great project, uh, quite stressful, um, but, you know, well worth it, I think. I think it was, it was a great result. I got my hand on one properly in Olympic um, when we were mixing a project called A Throw of Dice uh, with Nitin about five years ago. Um, I think that was a J series. But yeah, that was my, you know, I did a proper mix on that and that was a very enjoyable experience. But, and I've, you know, had a day here and there in different studios, you know, throughout my career. But I've always been drawn to the EQ particularly and the sort of the, the cleanliness of, of, you know, of the sound the transparency, etc. So. Um, yeah. uh, just its size, um, the problems it was solving for us uh, was, was, you know, the monitoring, um, the talkback, the, the queue sends. Uh, we don't like monitoring through, through software generally because we run with logic. Um, so we were able to put our mic pre's uh, into the X desk, 
and have have them on a fader so the performers you know the artists can hear and we can hear and it's all on a fader um, that was kind of the main reason really and that's just slotted nicely into our into our little workspace yeah, custom made desk yeah. but as soon as, as soon as you plugged it in I was I was next door with on the drums and I had headphones in and, and the sound compared to what we had before mm. just transformed yeah. completely you know yeah. so clear and a little bit three dimensional yeah no, that's good it was it just sort of and it, and it's funny actually originally we were going to have a screen in this central spot because we got into this having the, the, one of these screens kind of mm, flat down. so we had this space cut out for that in the desk and then um, and then this baby turned up and we went actually let's put that in there and so we had a nice little surround made for it and it looks like it was built for it so <laughs> yeah it's just uh, it's simple it sounds great mm. and you know it, it, it speeds up our workflow it really it does exactly what we bought it for mm. um, yeah yes yeah, definitely sounds great no doubt Yeah, the SSL has sort of slotted into our workflow uh, in the sense that it's the continuation of our tracking desk and it's uh, the mix bus from the tracking desk comes through and inserts here on the SSL as, along with the auxiliaries and the cues, cue sends. Um, so, you know, outputs one and two, which we're working with mainly out of Logic, come up on here. Uh, if we're working with a vocalist, we'll bring the Avalon or the Germanium or whatever mic pre we're working with in, into one of the channels here. Um, and we can send off to the headphone mix and we can hear what we want in here without messing around with in, in the environment of Logic or, or whatever software. Um, you know, we put the click on 7 normally so we can turn that off, we don't have to hear that in here um, and we can send that off to the, the performer. Um, yeah, so then you know, monitoring's here, dim, cut, talk back. Um, that's pretty much how we use it. Sometimes we'll insert um, something on the on the mix bus, Avalon seven four seven or whatever's floating around at the time, and that's sort of how we use it really. Because it's because of its size, it can sit right in the middle between the screens, so that you can actually see what's going on there and kind of manipulate everything. Yeah, in one place. Yeah, without having this whopping great mm. desk in front of you and the screen's yeah. miles away. Yeah, which so. in this room's not really going to work. So. Yeah, we've been working at Rack Studios mm -hmm. um, on the next instalment of the defamation of Strickland Banks. Well, it's the continuing story. It's called The Ballad of Belmarsh. It's going back to Ben's hip-hop roots, basically. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. We'll we've, yeah, on. we've done five weeks. we just finished last week. Um, so when Ben is back from his six-week US tour, we'll probably continue to be a continuation of that. So he's looking to put it out as soon as possible.